In this video tutorial, I'm gonna be sewing together the envelope suit, which looks like this. And I'm gonna sew the short sleeve and short leg version. Okay, so to start, we're gonna cut out our fabric. I have mine laid on my cutting mat with the grain line vertical, because all these pieces are gonna have a vertical grain line. So I'll cut up my front left first. And don't forget to cut the notch. Okay, so the first sewing step is going to be matching the shoulders together. And then we'll just serge those closed. Okay, so the shoulders are sewn together now. So you're gonna open it up and it should look like that. And the next step is going to be to place the neck band, which is here. But before you do that, you're going to want to place your tie on this peak here. And it's going to be the right side of the tie down against the right side of the fabric. So pin that in place. And then take your neck band. and fold it in half so the wrong sides are together. And then start it at the beginning of this neck curve coming up. So you'll fold it in half and place it against the edge of that fabric and pin it in place there. And you can just use that same pin to pin them all together. The tie, it's gonna go right on top of that tie and then pin the opposite end to the opposite edge of the neck, neck hole and pin that. And then you'll kind of want to stretch it a little bit so it's evenly distributed and pin a couple more spots. And you'll want more of the stretch to be around this top neck area instead of along the front curve of the garment. So that is pretty good. Now we can just go serge it on while stretching it to fit the neck hole. So now that your neck band is sewn on, you can see the tie here is secured in it. Uh, the next step is going to be to top stitch that serged seam. So you're just gonna use a straight stitch on your sewing machine to do that. And I like to use a pretty long stitch, like a four, on mine it's a four, um, just cause it looks a little bit better on the top stitching if it's, if it's not a really tight stitch. Uh, If you have some trouble with your presser foot pushing this fabric and stretching it out, just use your thumb a little bit and just pull the front end just a touch to relieve that pressure and then it gives you a much flatter seam.
Now, before moving on, you'll wanna serge the bottom edge of that front left piece. For the next step, you'll want your other tie pinned to the front left notch here. So you'll place this one so the wrong side is against the right side this time. Just pin that in place. And then we're going to, you'll just kind of want to keep those ties in the middle so they're out of any side seams. And then we're going to set up the side seams to be surged closed. So the front right will go over the front left and then you'll fold over the back so that the side seams are lined up. And you'll need to kind of adjust so they're all fitting. This notch and this tie will meet up and you'll pin those together. And then you'll want to pin in a few more places. And now what we're going to do is surge them closed. Now that the side seams are closed, we are going to do the inseam and leg cuffs. So I'll show you this short version first, but those of you that are doing the long version, you can skip ahead because I'll show you the long version next. So for the short version, and you can kind of just tie these to keep them out of the way for now. We'll trim them up later. So for the short version, you're gonna want to start with your leg cuffs. So with your leg cuffs, you'll just fold them in half. And they will run from inseam to inseam. And you're going to need to stretch it to fit. To fit. So you might want to pin it in a couple places as well. So we'll just do the same thing for both legs. Now for the short inseam, you're going to do it all in the sewing machine just because it's so short. Um, you can try to do it on the serger, but it gets quite difficult. So I'm gonna do it all in the sewing machine. And the first step is going to be to fold it in half with the right sides together and straight stitch the ends so they're closed. And then we'll flip it out and sew it onto the inseams. So once the ends are closed, you can cut some of that seam allowance off to reduce the bulk like this. And then turn it right side out. And then we'll place that along that open end seam. Just starting at, you wanna meet that closed edge along the edge of the leg cuff as closely as you can. And that's why I'm using a sewing machine because it's really hard to get that close on the serger. So there it's sewn on. Now all you're gonna wanna do is turn it down and top stitch that seam so it's more secure. Okay, now there's the inseam complete. And you'll just do the exact same thing 
to the other side as well. If you're doing the long pant version, the inseam and cuff is gonna be sewn a little bit different. You're gonna sew the inseam first. So you're gonna fold your inseam fabric in half and serge it to the inseam while stretching it to fit. So we'll do that on the serger. After you have the inseam surged on, you can choose to top stitch it if you like. Some people like that flatter look. Um, just for this video tutorial, I'm gonna skip it. So the next step is gonna be overlapping that binding down at the ankle. So front over back is generally how I'll do it. So just overlap those there and we're gonna top stitch them or I guess you could call lock stitch there just to hold them in place for our cuffs. To finish the legs on the long one, you're just going to turn it inside out now that those are secured. And we're going to insert our leg cuffs. So for the leg cuffs, you will fold them in half, right sides together, parallel to the grain line, and serge those ends closed. Now, after those are closed, you will fold them in half. So you have your cuff. And we'll place them inside the ankle hole. And you're going to want to make sure your seam is on the back side of the romper. So make sure this is the back and then place that folded edge inside. And then we'll just serge them on while you're stretching it to fit that ankle hole. That's the inseam completed on the long pant. All that's left for that is to set the snaps. So to set the snaps on the long pant inseam, um, I'm gonna do about five for this because it's a three to six month size, but you'll do a few more for the bigger sizes. Regardless, you're gonna find that center back portion first and set your first male half with the open ring on the inside and the snap portion on the outside. And you'll come down and set one near the bottom, leaving maybe an inch and a half. and on the other side. And then the best way to get the other snap placements, if you're doing an odd number of snaps, is just to meet that bottom and middle and then find the center there. And then after you're done setting that back inseam, you'll just lay the front one on top of it to feel the placement for the top half. And that's your inseam snaps.
To complete the sleeves, we're gonna just set the arm cuffs. And to do that, we're gonna fold them in half, parallel to the grain line, and serge the ends closed. Now, with the garment inside out, you'll take your cuff and fold it again. Fold that seam onto itself to form that cuff and you'll just insert it with the seam to the back into the armhole. And so you're just gonna need to stretch that a little bit to fit it and then serge it on all the way around. We'll do the same thing for both. Turn the garment right side out. And that's what your sleeve cuffs will look like. Now we just need to set the snaps. So I'm just gonna use a size 14 snap here. And if you're doing the shorts, you're gonna want uh, three for the inseam. And you're gonna want one for the chest area. So to start, I like to set the male halves first. So on the back, I just found the, the center and I'm gonna put that open ring on the inside. And this fabric's pretty thick, so I don't need any uh, stabilizer. But if you do, you can put an extra strip of fabric just along the back, or you can set it on this, just a little bit on top of that serged seam, or that um, seam allowance. So there's the center snap and then I'll put one on each end. So now that I have the male halves set, I will just lay the front side down on top of it, and then you can just easily feel where you need to place that next one. You just push that over top of that male half. There's your inseam snaps. And now just gonna do that one snap at the chest area. So this is a pretty uh, medium weight to thin jersey. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna cut a little piece of extra fabric to place on the inside to stabilize that snap on the inside. So I'm gonna set my outside snap first and then I'm gonna mark my placement for the inside snap. So for the outside one, I, well, a lot of times I'll just set it on top of that tie if I need more stability. Or if you have stable rib knit, you can place it inside the tie. So after that's placed, then kind of arrange the top so you know where that other half is gonna be. And then just mark, mark it with a pin. So now you can see where you're gonna have to place that other half. So I'll take that fabric, place it there, put the open ring inside. Now 
Okay. And now the last thing to do is trim your ties. So, let's get, length is just kind of a preference, but I'll usually just knot the end to finish it. Like that. And that's gonna complete it. And then you'll just wanna do some kind of a steaming or ironing to finish it.